Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Rock Family Fellowship Church Online. I'm Reverend Bradford Holt, and we're very glad to have you on the broadcast this day. Today, we are going to be uh, launching a brand new uh, devotional that um, eventually is going to be in compiled into a book form that will also be available for sale. Um, but especially working with my Asian Indian and uh, pastor partners all over the world, I realized the need for biblical discipleship because in Matthew chapter 28, it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he who is baptized will be saved. He is believing not. And it goes on to talk about teach them everything. It's basically talking about discipleship. And so I read there, I realize there's really an important need to lay a biblical foundation uh, for, especially for new believers, but really I think everybody could use this as a foundation. So this is kind of chapter one. Uh, I'm calling this the the miracle of recreation, and the name of the uh, the um, discipleship material is Rock Family Fellowship uh, Discipleship uh, Resource or Background. Anyhow, um, there was uh, one of the most notoriously bad characters that ever lived in New York was Orville Gardner. He was one of them, uh, the, the trainer of a prize fighter and a companion of all sorts of hard characters. His reputation was so thoroughly bad that he was called Awful Gardener. He had a little boy whom he dearly loved and this boy died. Short time after the boy's death, he was standing at the bar in a New York saloon surrounded by a number of his boon companions. One night, was sweltering, he stepped outside of the saloon to get a little fresh air. As he stepped out there, he looked up between the high buildings and the sky above his head. A bright star was shining down. And as he was looking at the star, he said to himself, I wonder where my little boy is tonight. Then a thought came to him in a flash. Wherever he is, you will never see him again unless you change your life. Touched by the Spirit of God, he hurried from the saloon to the room where he knew his godly mother was. He went in and asked his mother to pray for him. She did pray for him, and she led him to Christ. He finally went home to where he had kept a jug of whiskey. He did not dare to keep it, and he did not know what to do with it. Finally, he took it down to the river, got on the boat, rowed over an island, set the liquor on the rock, knelt down, and afterwards he said, I fought that jug of whiskey for a long time, and God gave him perfect deliverance. But what should he do with the jug? He dare not break it, lest the fumes set him wild. He dare not leave it, lest anybody else get it. Finally, he dug a hole in the ground with his heel and buried it. He left the island a free man. He became an incredible, powerful preacher for the gospel. And it was through listening to him preach that Jerry McCauley, convict turned preacher and founder of the Macaulay Water Street Mission was set to thinking and that afterwards led to his conversion. So what really happened when you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Now here's some scripture from the Holy Bible that talks about it. Number one, when you repented, you changed your mind about sin and evil deeds and you believe the gospel that Jesus died on the cross, suffered torture for our sins, past, present, and future. Then God raised him from the dead and showed himself alive to the disciples, the apostles. Then he ascended to heaven and will return in the future. In Matthew 7, 13 through 14, he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. Those who enter it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way that leads is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. So congratulations are in order. If you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you've made the most important decision to walk with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In order to make it to heaven, you must continue to walk with Christ until the day you die or when Jesus returns. 
Of course, he promises to keep you. Matthew 16, 25 says, Whosoever would save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 20, 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Matthew 24, 13 says, But the one who endures to the end shall be saved. Mark 8, 34 through 35 says, And the calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said unto them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoso, whoever would save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. Mark 16, 16 says, Whosoever, that's you, whosoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whosoever does not believe will be condemned. Luke 19, 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And this is a pretty famous passage, John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God said not send his Son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world that he might be saved through him. John 3.36 says, Whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whosoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. John 10.9 I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. Acts 2.21 And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 4.12 And there is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 13, 47, For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Mark 16, 16, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whosoever does not believe will be condemned. Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Praise the Lord. John 10, 9, and 10. John 10, 9, and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with confession is made unto salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 2, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Titus 2, 11 through 12. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Titus 3, 5. He saved us, not because of works that done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 5, 9, and be, 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Hebrews 7, 25. Consequently, he is able to save them to the uttermost, those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe on him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 1 Peter 2, 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that you may grow up into salvation. 2 Peter 2, 9. 
then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and keep the unrighteous under punishment unto the day of judgment. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repent. First John 5, 12, whosoever has the son has life, whosoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So when you heard the gospel and believed the Lord Jesus, a miracle took place. You were transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The Holy Spirit draw, drew you to himself. When you believed God's word, you repented of your sin. You were instantly transformed into the new creation. Not an outward man, but the inner man of the heart. 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is new. The new is here. Goes on to say, I am the door. Anyone who enters by me will be saved and he will go in and find pasture. Acts 2.21, and it shall come to pass. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 4.12, there is no salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given by which we must be saved. Acts 13, 47, for so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Acts 16, 31, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved in your household. Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel for the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Romans 5, 7 through 8, for one will scarcely die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 10, and if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, how much more? Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? Romans 10, 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, or is justified with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, or drunkards, or revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 1 and 2. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel that I preached to you, which you receive, which you stand, in which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all should be made alive. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. That is, Christ God was reconciling the word to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting unto us the message of reconciliation. Okay, so if you're born again, you're a new creation. All things are becoming new. That means you are a new species of beating. The word transformed there says you were like a caterpillar who became a butterfly. So the first question one must ask is, why do we need to be born again? Well, because our ancestors, Adam and Eve, sinned, we lost our connection to God. And sin entered our hearts. The bad news is God loves us. But because he's holy, he must punish sin. And the punishment for sin is physical and spiritual death and hell forever. Let me tell you, hell is a terrible place. It's meant for the devil and his angels, not for man. But because of our sin nature, Romans 3.23, for all of sin fallen short of the glory of God. We can never be good enough to meet God's standard for holiness. Because of our sin, we are all headed to hell forever. The most horrible place you can imagine of outer darkness. You're to be chained to a pit forever. And every few minutes, fire burns the flesh. They feel the pain forever. The good news is because God so loved us, Jesus, the God-man, sacrificed himself on the cross to pay for our sins. When we repent and we believe the gospel and we put our hope and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive eternal life now. The God, the Holy Spirit, enters into us and recreates our spirit man. 
so that we can fellowship with God and go to heaven when we die or the Lord returns. So please hear me. Make sure that you are born again. If you're not sure, this is your opportunity. Pray with me. You need to uh, repent of your sins. That means change your heart and your mind. And you need to believe the gospel. What's the gospel? Well, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, rose again from the dead, and he's sent it into heaven, and he's coming back for us someday. So pray this prayer out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I can't save myself. I need you. You died on the cross for my sin. You rose again from the dead. You ascended into heaven, and you're returning again for me. Soon come, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in right now. Live your life through me. I repent of my sin, and I believe that you died on the cross, rose again from the dead, and you're coming again. Help me pray. Help me worship. Help me read my Bible. Help me attend church. Tell other people about you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. You prayed that prayer, and you meant it. That was the first time you prayed that prayer. Congratulations, a miracle. The greatest miracle has just taken place in your heart and in your life. You need to continue to walk in the Lord Jesus Christ and to be part of his church, universal and part of a local church. The next step is to make arrangements with your pastor to be water baptized, which is an outward sign of what already happened in your heart. It's like a testimony tells everybody that you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you are his ambassador. Let me just pray for you. Father God, I just pray for those that are watching this broadcast and uh, number one, maybe, maybe you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. God, speak to them. And maybe you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you really haven't lived for him the way you should. Just make a clean break. Repent. Say, God, forgive me, God. Choose to go back to church. Choose to read your Bible. Choose to pray. Choose to walk with God. Let us know if this has been a blessing to you. Jesus loves you and we do too. And Jesus is Lord. I did want to let you know if this has been a blessing to you. Uh, we could use your help. Uh, we do have PayPal available for giving. Um, now, if, if you have a local church, tithe to your local church. Um, but you can do offerings and other things to help support Rock World Missions. We just had a bunch of uh, new believers come to know Christ in the unreached people groups. Uh, in fact, we had 33 uh, water baptized recently, and they need Bibles desperately. They need Bibles. They need audio Bibles, and uh, you can provide those to help them. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Jesus loves you, and we do too. Jesus is Lord.